I've got a question for you. Why haven't you started your Pokemon card business yet? If you've been watching me for some time, you've probably got at least a little bit of interest in starting a business, and chances are you've made several excuses as to why you haven't started, or you've been waiting for a certain thing to happen. And I really sat down and thought about it today, uh, ironically when my phone was dead and I was wondering, oh man, I can't check my DMs and I can't check my order history, I have to go all the way downstairs to my computer and check that stuff. I was sitting on the couch playing with my dog. And at that moment, it hit me that without my phone, I wouldn't have been able to start this business. The phone and the internet in general is the reason why starting this business was so easy. For those who don't know me, I sell Pokemon cards full time. We've got a seven figure business. I do it out of my basement and I did it all with TikTok, Wix, YouTube, and Instagram. So this is a classic Brian rant explaining to you how lucky we have it. My grandpa started a business racing pigeons. He raised them, and he raced them across the country 50 years ago. And he did this up until his death 10 years ago. And at the time, I don't know if you guys know this, but they did not have Reddit or YouTube or anything else. He somehow gathered hundreds of pigeons, bred them in a horse barn of all places, met a community where they competed for thousands of dollars of prizes by sending the pigeons off hundreds of miles and racing them back home. And while this is a silly business and kind of weird, it illustrates the point that if he was able to participate in such a niche industry and make money doing it without the internet, how the hell do you guys, or anyone else watching, have so much trouble starting a business online? We have such an advantage right now with a phone. Not even a new phone. You can get like an iPhone 8 for probably a few hundred dollars, and you have access to the whole world. It's insane when you think about it. Not only do you have a video camera on that phone if you make content, you also have just access to, to canva.com, which you can make posts on. You've got access to um, you know podcasting apps where you can just use your voice if you don't wanna you know, have your, your face on camera. And then you have access to these e-commerce platforms, which somehow people complain about them costing $30 a month. Do you know how expensive retail space is? Because back in the day, my other grandpa actually, and my great grandpa on that side, they both had barbershop businesses. And this was 90 years ago, my great grandpa started and they did this until again, they died. And for a barbershop, you need a physical space. Obviously you can't do barbershop business online. They had to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars per year or per month to rent the space and then towards the end, you know, recent 10 years, it was a couple thousand dollars a month. And they never complained about that. People in my comments ask, oh, but Shopify costs $30 a month. Yeah, it does. What's the alternative? There are so many excuses I've heard as to why not to start. People that can't find an official distributor like Southern Hobby or Peach State, people that somehow can't find a Japanese distributor, even though you have access to almost every Japanese person, Korean person, you, you have access to every person basically on your phone. If you touch your phone's glass in a very specific way, you can order a pizza, contact anyone in Japan, and ruin your life on OF. You can do infinite things on a phone. And if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you have one. And if you want to start a Pokemon business, you have the huge advantage of you always have inventory. You already have inventory. Nobody who's not a fan of Pokemon wants to start a Pokemon card business. If you're here right now, you have a binder for sure. You have cards in that binder and chances are you have a ton of bulk that you don't need or want. Instead of selling the bulk to Toad and Troll or, or uh, Danny Phantom or whoever, why don't you consider selling it yourself? You're not gonna necessarily make bank off it, but like, you got to start with something. And if you're complaining that you don't have Southern Hobby or Peach State or AG, whoever, well, you have something. Start a TCG player account. List your bulk. I think that'd be step one if you want to start a business. TCG player, it's a free account. Sell your bulk. Yeah, you have to pay a small fee, but you know what? TCG player beams your cards all across the US and probably across the world for you. So yeah, if you pay 10, 12, whatever percent, that's a lot easier than knocking on people's doors and going, hi, I sell Pokemon cards. Do you want to buy some? Right? I think that's worth 10, 12%. And you're, the bulk is sitting there anyway. 
like what better practice do you have to at least get a business started than selling bulk online? I am a huge advocate of starting your own website. I've been spitting this out for the past year of my content, but I realize that's not always possible for people and that's not always the most effective way to use your time or resources. So start with something else, sell on eBay. And a lot of you guys do, a lot of you guys have an eBay account, a lot of you guys are active on TCG Player, but based on the comments I get, a lot of you aren't. And you're looking to make all this money up front. You see my basement full of hundreds of thousands of dollars. You see my sales that are millions of dollars a year and you go, oh, I wanna be like that. Okay, I've been doing this for three years and I, had, I, I have a lot of experience in the e-commerce world. Like you're not gonna be at my level right away. Stop watching me and, and these other big businesses on YouTube if you're if you're going to directly compare yourself to them because it ain't going to happen. You want to directly compare yourself to me, go all the way back to my first TikToks when I'm selling these stupid Charizard promo cards out of a small bedroom using literal cardboard I cut out myself and putting them in these sketchy mailers with shipping tape all over them. My setup was so out of this world sketch, I don't even know how or why people trusted me. If you want to compare yourself to me, go back to that time. I had nothing official, I had no TCG player account, I had an eBay account I used for a little bit. I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't have anyone to explain this to. Like, Alpha Investments was the only YouTube channel out there that really did Pokemon business content that I knew of. Now, you guys have all these channels that started you know, during the uh, cough cough era, and you're not taking full advantage of it, or you're complaining that it's too hard to start. We have never been in a better time to start a business than ever before. Again, it was only 10 years ago before the internet was what it is today, and before that, you had to like rent brick and mortar space. You had to market yourself with paper, like pay for a newspaper ad. And by the way, if you've ever run a garage sale, newspaper ads are extremely freaking expensive, at least here in Omaha, like a couple hundred dollars for a few lines. Do you know how much it costs to put an Instagram post out? Literally free. In fact, depending on what you're doing on content, it's negative money. If I wanna make an ad on YouTube, it costs me negative money because YouTube pays me per view. Not all you guys are going to be monetized, and I realize that, but think about the advantage you have. And by the way, when you're in Omaha, Nebraska, and you buy a newspaper ad, that's going to reach a few thousand people, and most of those people are old people who don't know that Pokemon exists, and if they do know that Pokemon exists, they call them Pokemon, and they get that mixed up with Digimon. Like, that's the target demo for newspaper print. So, my god, you, it, there's such an advantage right now, and... If you've been doing everything, you've been doing all the steps I've taught you in my playlist and you've been hustling at it and you're not making any momentum, that's fine because you will if you keep it up and no hate on how long it takes you. It might take you a long time to get some momentum. That's fine. I'm really targeting in this video the people who just are waiting for some arbitrary moment to hit, like they're waiting for Southern Hobby to phone them up and be like, hey, I don't see any content on your page, I don't see any sales history, but what I heard by reading a comment you left on Pokeyenny's YouTube channel, you want to start a Pokemon business. Let me get you started. Here's 10 cases of evolving skies, and you know what? We talked to Japan, we've got some 151 laying around from the reprint, we'll send you those too. That ain't gonna happen. So start small, or don't do it at all. That's fine too. I'm just assuming if you're watching me, you probably want to do something in the business world of Pokemon. but. Start with what you have. You have inventory. You have bulk that you don't even want. And you probably have doubles of cards that you do enjoy. The amount of, of boxes I see my customers buy, which by the way, I never had that level of disposable income, so I don't know what y'all do for a living or how much credit card debt y'all are in, but my average order is $260, I think. So I know you're getting a lot more than just extra bulk. I know that you're pulling uh, multiple ARs and SIRs and SARs. I know you're pulling multiple copies of these cards. And by the way, these cards are worth money. And a lot of you guys just sell them to card shops for like 70% of the value. And if you're just in it as a collector, that's fine. You know, it's super easy to do that. But even some of the people that want to be business people, they're selling their cards, their assets to these 
you know, brick and mortar TCG uh, LGS shops, not realizing that that could be your inventory. There are so many folks out there that are selling their bulk with the intention, I think, to like gather money so they can buy sealed product and sell the sealed product on our website or on TCG player. Guys, sealed product sucks. Take it from me. You don't make jack on sealed product until you can get established with a distributor or meet some good vendors in Japan. The best move really is singles and bulk and, and even graded cards maybe. And I don't do that because I don't have to, but you might have to to get started. And so I don't know why on earth people are taking their bulk and their, their good cards, trading them in for 70% value, and then using that money thinking that, oh, I'm gonna buy, I'm just, I'm just waiting to save up to buy a case at Temporal Forces, and then I'm gonna start my rip and ship channel. For what? Why? Just start with what you have. And, and the experience you're gonna gain is, it, it, it's extremely valuable. Again, if you go back to my previous content from three years ago, you see me, like, I literally have a video of me cutting up uh, pieces of cardboard. Some of them are Amazon boxes. I'm cutting them into little cardboard squares. I'm putting the single on the cardboard square, throwing that in an envelope, and folding the envelope and taping it so that it stays rigid. And then I don't even have a label printer, so I'm just printing it out on, like, a basic Brother printer, cutting that out and taping it on the mailer. It looks so bad, and you know what? I had great reviews. Nobody cared. Nobody cared because... All they want is the product and they just want it delivered safely. So I don't know why you guys think that you need to buy these shipping tables I have or or these uh, fancy rolls of bubble wrap and these fancy rolls of, of brown packaging paper. Like, ask your mom or dad who works at a you know, HVAC company to bring home some bubble wrap from work. Or next time you get a package from Amazon, keep the brown paper. You don't need to invest all this money. There are so many people that ask me, Brian, you know, how much capital do I need to start? When I hear the word capital, when, when you guys say capital and, uh, and, and startup costs, like Rudy says this in Alpha Investments, you already lost me. You've been watching too much business YouTube and you've been focused on glossary terms. This is not a business where you need startup capital and, and venture money. Like if you're a Pokemon fan, you have everything you need from the get-go. You have a cell phone. You have access to a million different sales platforms and you have access to inventory. Even if you're not profiting off of it, you have literally everything you need to get started. You don't need to start with thousands of dollars. I mean, if you want to do a rip and ship show like on Twitch or whatnot or TikTok, whatever. Okay, buy some packs. Just buy a few. You're not going to have anyone watching you anyway for a long time. You might have a few people that tune in and maybe you'll get a few customers a week. So buy a few packs, spend a hundred bucks. Well, Brian, that's startup capital, isn't it? Yeah, it is, $100. Mow a lawn. And you can sell singles on these platforms too, by the way. And as you do this, you're going to gain customers and trust and experience just shipping this stuff out. Uh, there's a lot of people who start just with plain white envelopes and stamps. And there's different ways to go about that where you might mess things up. You might not protect the card efficiently you know it might come damaged it might get stolen and you have to learn how to kind of gauge okay do i want to use tracking on this or do i want to risk it with just a stamp how expensive should the card be before i use tracking because people are going to be uh you know dishonest like all of these things come with experience i can tell you all day long how to get rich selling pokemon cards but if you don't turn on a freaking camera or pull out a crappy piece of Amazon cardboard, you're not actually going to pick anything up. And if you're watching this for entertainment, like I watch a lot of business content for entertainment, business that I have absolutely no interest in, in participating in, awesome, I appreciate your view, but I know most of you guys want to start something, and I don't know what the hell you're waiting for. To go back to the first point, you have a literal supercomputer in your pocket the average iPhone or Samsung phone is more powerful than any computer almost every president had that ran a whole entire country. Like, think about that. Like, every president from, like, Bush previous, probably Obama previous, your phone is more powerful than the technology they had access to. That's wild. And you still can't find a way to start a business? Are you insane? Like, if you can't at least start something, you might not win. You might not succeed. You might not get rich. 
But if you're having trouble starting, I don't know what the hell to tell you. And maybe Pokemon's not your thing. I had 50 businesses before Pokemon that I started and failed at, but in every single one of those examples, I learned something. I had this reptile YouTube channel where I learned how to kind of do different uh, camera angles because the reptiles were super small and the lighting was weird because of their heat lamps. So I learned a little bit about lighting and angles there. I had this clothing company where I learned how to build a website and that website turned into pokeanny.com. I also learned about shipping processes and customer service. I had a freaking ASMR channel, which is hilarious, where I bought the Yeti mic that I have to this day, and that Yeti mic has allowed me to make good quality content on my camera. I had um, an eBay business where I bought stuff from garage sales, and I, I flipped them on eBay, and obviously the e-commerce, you know, it, that's obviously related, but what's not related is the amount of trouble I got in with the IRS because I didn't pay my taxes in that eBay business. And I got a, a, a bill for $13,000 because my little hobby was actually a big revenue business. So I learned in that business, don't F with the IRS. Every single business I had, whether it was somewhat successful or a complete failure, I learned something. So even if you're not a Pokemon fan, if you want to start a business, making stickers, I don't know, selling clothes, whatever. Depending on what you want to do, some businesses you can't start for free or you can't start for $100. Okay. Learn how to learn how to use e-commerce by going to a garage sale and flipping stuff. Not only are you going to make money, but you're going to learn a lot about shipping, taxes, customer service. You're going to learn so much just by starting something. And the amount of uh, people, uh, the amount of people you have access to, no matter what industry you go, like I said earlier, it's infinite. You can contact almost everyone in the world on a phone or with an internet connection. And the, the folks that are usually asking me the most questions are the people that can't find a Japanese or Korean person to import cards from, from those countries, because those are the only Pokemon cards that have the popularity and the margin that can keep you afloat and actually run your life um, full time. English Pokemon, if that's all you focus on, you're gonna have a lot of trouble maintaining a full-time income. So Japanese and Korean are what I usually suggest to people. And they ask me, you know, how do I get a supplier? I've told you. Do you want me to write down their name, address, social security number, and blood type? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did though, which is more than most people are gonna tell you. You get on your phone, which again, you can contact everyone. You can contact freaking Eminem, if you want, I mean, if you try hard enough, like get on your phone, get on Instagram, type in hashtag Japanese Pokemon cards on the search, find every single person that has multiple booster boxes of Japanese Pokemon cards in their profile on their feed, because if they have like a whole stack of booster boxes or they have stacks of cases, they're probably getting them from a distributor. They have a ton of them. If a Japanese person's Instagram looks like my basement, they're probably worth at least contacting. Ask them, hey, I want to sell Pokemon cards here in the US. Do you have a price list? Do you sell in bulk? Do you ship here? They do. They ship everywhere. Most Japanese folks, they're not like me. They ship to Canada, the US, Mexico, and every other country in Europe. Every country in Europe, I should say. And, and they do it for a pretty good price if you buy in bulk enough. And if you don't have the capital to buy Japanese cards at a price at a quantity where the shipping is low enough to justify it, use a credit card. Attach a credit card to your PayPal account. Use PayPal uh, goods and services to protect you in case you find a person in Jap Japan or Korea that's dishonest. You have 30 days to pay a credit card back interest free. You have a literal free loan. Depending on where you are, where you're at in life, it might be for thousands of dollars. If you're, you know, a high school or college kid, you might have two thousand dollar limit. But if you're old and thirty like I am, you probably have a ten thousand dollar limit at the very least. You can borrow any amount of money you want and pay it back within thirty days and get that money for free. Don't go crazy with that. But if you want to start a rip and ship business, for example, okay, go to my website or go to any other website. Go to TCG Player. Go to eBay buy a booster box for a hundred bucks. All you need to do is sell enough packs to pay a hundred dollars off within a month and, and you're back to zero. And if something happens where your business completely fails or where you decide, you know what, I'm actually not interested in this. All right, you're out a hundred bucks and you have cards that you probably would have bought for your hobby anyway. It's almost riskless. And if you want to start your own website, 
you're going to have to go through a little more trouble than a TCG player account or an eBay account because, again, at that point, you have to find your own customers. Uh, you don't have to pay a fee. Like, you don't have to pay, you know, 10% of, of selling fees if you build your own website. But the catch is, like I said, you have to find your own customers. And in that case, uh, we're going to go back to the why are you making excuses question. Turn your damn phone on. Hit record. Every phone after the iPhone 8, I think, has like 1080p HD, which is all you need, by the way. You don't need 4K. You don't need a DSLR. I ran my business for three years before I got this fancy pantsy camera. And by the way, I only bought this thing because I wanted a tax write-off at the end of last year. You can use a, a any phone, vertical, and, I'm not going to say or, I'm saying and, landscape. Because make both. Why the hell wouldn't you? Landscape, portrait, make some content on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, X, make content on all of those, and you're going to suck at it badly. It's going to be ugly, but that's okay. And if you're nervous about starting, uh, turning on the camera, because a lot of people are, you know, a lot of you guys, are, you're not as pretty as I am, that's fine. What I would suggest is, and this, this was a trick I used actually early on, before the Pokemon days, but early on, my goal was to make the crappiest content out there. My goal was to make cringe content. Like, literally. Like, I was like, I'm going to make some really stupid-looking videos. And I did it on purpose, because then I couldn't fail. If I tried to be cringe or annoying or loud or, or ugly, I'd, like, wake up and do it before I, you know, put my, my big, beautiful hair together and whatnot, like, right out of bed. Crappy content. I tried, because when you put out content that sucks on purpose... You're, you're going to achieve your goal because it's not hard to suck. And you're also going to achieve a confidence needed to make content down the line. If you can put out crap content, you can put out good content without being nervous. Um, Matt Fosh, who's a big YouTuber, he does all sorts of like, he calls them silly videos. And a lot of them are like pranks or just look him up. Matt Fosh, he's very unique. He did a video very recently of him uh, in a comedy club. He had this nervousness about performing live on stage. So he decided, you know what? If I want to get rid of that nervousness, I'm going to do the crappiest stand-up routine possible. Because if I can get through that, I can get through anything in the future. So what Matt Fosh did is he went to like a kindergarten classroom and asked the students there to write him jokes. Kindergartners are not good at writing jokes. So that was his whole spiel. He, he asked kindergartners to write him jokes. He wrote them all down. He went to a comedy club and he told those jokes to a live audience. And it was brutal for him. He was super nervous, super embarrassed, but he, he did it. He took 20 minutes of pain. And now that he's done with that, he's like, well, God, I got through that. I can do freaking anything now. So maybe take a shot. Maybe, you know, smoke some and, and relax yourself. Do the content. And then when you wake up in the morning from your hangover, you can look at that and go, huh, that wasn't so bad. That's Brian's advice. Get super drunk or super high, make some content, put it everywhere, make sure you don't say anything too dumb, like go easy on the stuff. And when you wake up in the morning, you can look at your feed and go, you know what? That wasn't so bad. And this time I'm going to do it sober. That's what I suggest because you have to start somehow and for some reason, people have a lot of trouble starting. Another tip you can do, which uh, if, if you're somebody that doesn't like to engage in those activities, like me, I'm addicted to caffeine, that's it. You can make YouTube videos and post them as unlisted or as private. And that's actually a really good idea. Make a few videos, pretend that you're gonna post them, but keep the uh, privacy set to private or unlisted and just do that for a few weeks practice up and then watch the videos. And if you have uh, friends or a significant other or parents or whoever, have them watch it if you're comfortable or just watch it by yourself. And every day you try to get a little bit better until you have content that you're at least relatively comfortable with and then go from unlisted to public and that'll be your first video. Then when you get big and famous and successful, if you want to be like, hey guys, this is how I started, you can unlist uh, those first three or four videos from private to public and kind of make fun of yourself. I do it all the time. Uh, in one of my videos I made way back in the day, I toured my 
my office space at the time, which was in this little 10 by 10 bedroom. And in the video, I was so self-aware of where I'd be now that you actually hear me say, yeah, I'm doing a little tour of the Pokemon card company. So in two or three years, I can make fun of myself and how lame this was. I literally say those exact words. And guess what? I did. I made a video uh, a couple months ago, essentially tongue in cheek, making fun of where I was. And I should be proud of where I was because I started, I had something going and I was making a lot of sales. Quite frankly, you might not be as lucky as I was. I had a very big advantage starting during cough, cough season, but it's fun to document your process, whether you're documenting your process in public or in private unlisted mode, either way, you're going to see gains. If you're trying to lose weight, same idea. You're trying to gain muscle, same idea. Documenting your process is a great way to at least encourage you not only to start, but to continue onward. So in conclusion, if you want to start a business, you've got so many more advantages than grandpa's grandpa's had. You've got a huge advantage over maybe your older cousin, depending on how old you are. Like again, 10 years ago, the internet was not what the internet is today. It wasn't even close, not almost not even comparable. Shopify and Wix, like I think those existed, but not to the level they're at today. Any social media platform, not even close. The technology in your phone, 720p maybe. Just the awareness of e-commerce in general, super low. People typically, maybe 15 years ago, people didn't even feel comfortable buying stuff online. They went to brick and mortar because they could see, touch, smell, lick. They could they could do all this with that stuff. Um, that was 15 years ago. Now, people don't want to go outside. They want to buy stuff online and they prefer that. Look at Black Friday nowadays. You go to a Black Friday sale and in real life, you're not going to see nobody. No one gets trampled anymore. Nobody dies in the Walmart entryway anymore. Now, we sit on the computer, we eat Doritos, drink Mountain Dew, get fat and shop online. And that's what you want as an e-commerce business. Get, get, sell Doritos. Hell, sell Mountain Dew online. I don't know. Find a way to do that. You're going to you're going to do great. So if, you, if you're doing the brick and mortar online thing, there's a little motivation for you. If you want to start your own website, you got to make content because if you don't make content, no one's going to find your site. And even if they do find your site, they're not going to trust your site unless there's a face to the name. Why would you, you've been to websites before that kind of look a little bit sus. My website looked super sus at the beginning. It was like sketch as hell. I didn't know what I was doing. And the only reason people bought from my website was because they saw my face, my personality. They knew that I had some level of internet clout slash reputation. So they, they, you know, they took a chance. They probably used PayPal to protect themselves and it worked out for them. And so then they bought more stuff. Like if you want to start an online store outside of TCG player, eBay, Mercari, etc., you need to make content. You need to press record. And I told you all the tips and tricks, including drinking and smoking in order to get you comfortable and confident enough to make content. So rewind the video if you somehow forgot, maybe you were smoking before this video and your mind's a little hazy. Rewind the video. There's some tips on how to make content. Uh, you want to link everything together as well. So if you have an Instagram, make sure you use like Linktree or a similar, look up Linktree, it's fantastic. Or a similar a service where you can access Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all the stuff from one platform. And then on Facebook, make sure that it links back to Instagram, blah, blah, blah. On YouTube, make sure it links to everything. On your website, make sure it links to all your social media. On your social media, make sure it links all to your website. You want a big circle of doors that can get people from A, B, C, D to D, C, B, A. Big circle of doors because depending on where you post and where you make videos and where on Google the SEO puts your website, depending on where that is, different people are going to find different places first. There are some people that are going to discover you on Instagram first. There are some people that are going to come across your website first. And you want all those people to be able to circle around all of your platforms so that they can you know, know, like, and trust you and they get hit by your content more often. Uh, also, if you build your own website, do a lot of research on SEO, that search engine optimization. You're gonna to wanna to look up keywords on Google such as alt text, meta descriptions, metadata, and just hashtags in general, also keywords. You're gonna to wanna to look up all these things on Google and YouTube to learn how to use them to, to, to help Google recommend your website to people uh, in the best way possible. Again, that's SEO, search engine optimization. Wix is the platform I use. Shopify is a lot more prevalent online. So if you want to look up SEO Shopify, you might find 
you might find more luck finding content based on that, and then everything on Shopify can be applied to Wix. So look that stuff up and kind of learn from there. As far as advertising goes, um, advertising being paid marketing, I would not recommend it when you start because number one, you don't know what you're doing and you will lose money, absolutely. And number two, it's just not necessary. We did not start advertising until we hit $100,000 of sales, which was about four or five months into the business, which again, I had a huge advantage, cough, cough season, everyone was at home. But even then we barely advertised. We spent like a couple hundred bucks a month. Now we're spending 5,000 a month on YouTube or on Facebook and Instagram alone. But for the first two years, we didn't spend much at all on advertising. You don't need it. If you make content and you do it enough, the organic reach that your content is gonna get you, that's all you freaking need. And you can't just post once a week. Don't listen to those YouTubers who are like, you need a schedule of posting. That's for something completely different. If you're in e-commerce, and especially if you're new, you need to post multiple times per day. And if you can't do that, for whatever reason, post once a day. You can afford to post once a day. If you can't afford to post once a day, maybe you're super duper busy, maybe you have five kids, whatever, maybe you're a single parent, whatever. Okay, find one day a week where you have free time, because don't tell me there's not one day a week you don't have free time. I'm one of the busiest people in the world that I know. I have a lot of free time. Find one day a week, just one day, make five to seven videos. They can be simple videos. They don't need to be all, they don't need to be big or fancy. They don't even need to be long. They can be shorts, a little TikToks, little two minute clips, whatever. Five to seven of those in that one day of freedom you have, and then schedule the post to post every day. You know, you can schedule posts on every platform. It's super easy. You do bulk upload. You hit, uh, instead of hitting uh, go public or go private, you hit schedule. It's very easy to do. You can look it up if you need to. Schedule it to post once a day for the next week. And then at some point during that week or at the end of the week, you'll have another free day. And then you make seven to 10 more posts and you schedule those out and you do that. If you're super duper duper busy, just make more of them. On your free day, you make two weeks worth of content or a month worth of content, you can you can do this. Like real YouTubers, like not me, but like actual, like Mr. Beast, like they have videos set for months on end and they do it when they have free time or they do it in between big projects and then they just schedule it out so it looks like they're posting every day. If you follow PokeTubers and, and Instagram people in the Pokemon community, uh, Dr. Applesauce, he's a good example. He, if you watch his channel, it looks like he's always at conventions. It looks like he's like, you're like, oh man, how does he have to, how does he have the money to afford this? Is he just always getting invited to go to these conventions? No, he goes to like a few conventions a year. That's it. But you'll see him posting about like every single day he's at a convention. Well, no, he goes to one convention, like in Orlando, he goes to Collecticon. He films like 50 pieces of content, interview content mostly where he's talking to random people and then, uh, panel interview con uh, content where he's like interviewing voice actors. He films all of that in the two days of the convention, makes videos and schedules them out for the next two months until there's another convention and then he does it again. These people that you see in the Pokemon community that you think, wow, you know, I wanna be like that. They just go to the same conventions you do. They're not going to these exclusive conventions. They go to a few a year, they make a ton of content, just like I said, bulk content. They schedule it out and then they're their social media stays active. And that's really important. You want your social media to always be active because if YouTube, if Meta, whoever, if they see you posting every day, they're going to be more likely to recommend your content to, to more people. Like even if I take a week off YouTube for whatever reason, and I make a complete banger of a video, that is gonna be less likely to get recommended to you than if I post meh content every day of the week. It's just how it works. The algorithm awards participation. Obviously you want to make as quality content as you can, but making multiple pieces of decent content is a lot better than making one piece of good content per week in this specific industry. If you're again, Mr. Beast or Ryan Trahan, you thrive on quality content because people have come to expect it, but you're not an entertainment channel. You're a business. So you need to be out there. If you post once a week, that is probably 45 times a year 
considering you're going to miss some weeks and there's some holidays in there. That's probably 45 times a year at most that you're going to be seen by people. When people like me are posting 10 times a day, it's, it's just, it's basic maths, guys. And I've said this before, and this guy Phoenix Resale taught me this. He's a big uh, video game resale channel. He told me this. He's like, Brian, the Pokemon sphere and the video game sphere are massive, way bigger than you, me, and whoever's watching thinks. They are huge. It, they're so big that if you post every single hour of the day, the chances of the average person seeing more than one piece of content in that day are slim to none. Your subscribers might, but even they, if they don't have the notification bell turned on, even they are not gonna see every piece of content you post unless they're actively engaging with your channel, which in that case, they probably like you anyway. But look at the people you subscribe to. You're probably subscribed to 500 different channels, and I bet you see the same 20 channels, if that, and then you get recommended a bunch of stuff based on your browsing history. So it's a little extreme of an example, but just, just hear me out. I'm gonna say it one more time. If you post 10 times a day in, in a industry as large as Pokemon or gaming, or really any industry probably, the chances of the same random viewer seeing more than one video in a day are slim to none. So the people that are like, oh, I don't wanna flood the feed. I flooded the hell out of the feed. I straight Noah's Ark to that crap. And you know what? No one got pissed off. I didn't get a single negative comment. Like, dude, shut up. I get more dude shut ups now that I only post to YouTube once every couple days than I did when I was flooding TikTok's algo. Because it's huge, it's massive. And if you're doing shorts, if they don't want to see you, they just swipe up within 10 milliseconds and then they move on. You're not going to you're not going to insult anybody posting multiple times a day. You're only going to gather people, you're not going to lose people. So, that's my rant for the day. You guys like these longer videos, so I'm trying to make more longer videos, which there's a tip right there. Listen to your freaking audience. If your audience comments that they like long videos or if you see in your analytics that people that you get more views on longer videos, make freaking longer videos. That's what I'm doing now. I, I've been doing, I am multi seven figure business. I've got 17,000 subs, which I realize isn't a lot, but for me, that's a ton and I'm super happy with that. And I'm still learning every single day how to adapt and change my content. I looked at the analytics, I read the comments. People like these rant videos a lot more than my over edited vlog videos. So I make the over edited vlog videos because I enjoy that, but I make these long rant videos because I also enjoy talking, but also because it does so well in the algo. Listen to your audience, stop making excuses, start your freaking content. And if you wanna start a pigeon racing business, hit me up because I have some files from grandpa's USB drive before he passed and I can probably hook you up. Anyway, that's all I gotta say. This video is sponsored by me, pokeyne.com. Go there, buy some stuff and have a wonderful day.